there is a lab, I think it's a lab 06. Okay, here it is. You can go to the, see the lab the official website to see the lab description. Here is the buffer overflow vulnerability lab. And they also provide the files we need, x.c, x.py. These two files are written in C and Python correspondingly used to generate that bad file, the data file. The stack.c is a vulnerable program. And a core shell code is a C code to uh, run a shell. Here we can open the description here. The overview of the lab, the learning objective of this lab is for you to gain the first hand experience on buffer of the vulnerability by putting what you have learned about the vulnerability from class into action. We have learned uh, this Monday and the buffer overflow is defined as the condition in which a program attempts to write data beyond the boundaries of pre-allocated fixed uh, length buffers. And this vulnerability can be used by a malicious user to alter the flow control of the program that return address in the function frame leading to the execution of malicious code. Here we use the ultimate attack, the shell code. And in this lab, students, will, you will be given a program with a level of vulnerability, that stack.c. And your task is to develop a scheme to exploit the vulnerability and finally gain the root privilege. So that one of the program should be a side UID program. And in addition to the attacks, students will be guided to work through several protection schemes that have been implemented in the operating system to counter against buffer overflow attacks. And those countermeasures, we will put them in action in the next lab. And you need to evaluate whether the scheme worked or not and explain why. The lab covers the following topics. Buffer overflow vulnerability and attack stack layout in a function invocation. The countermeasures address randomization, non-executable stack and stack card. And we will learn uh, next week. Shell code. We have a separate lab on how to write shell code from scratch. And uh, this Monday we will learn about shell code in C and in assembly language. The return to lab C attack, which aims at defeating the non-executable stack countermeasure, is covered in a separate lab. And we will see whether we have time to complete this one. Here, customized by the instructor, we can put a value between zero and 400 for this lab, the buffer size which is the buffer size. So you need to make hands dirty to really do the lab instead of copying some previous uh, labs. And we will change the buffer size. During the demo, we use 300. Now we will use a different number. Some further materials you can read the book chapter and uh, read the video, watch that video. The lab environment is what we, we are currently in, the seat virtual machine. In this uh, lab one, we are going to complete task one and task two. Here are some uh, prereq prerequisites for pre preparation. So first let's uh, complete this uh, preparation first. Now we are going to start this lab. So I would like to create a folder and uh, 
put all that all the needed files in the folder. Today's lab is uh, lab 06. So I create a folder lab 06. And to put all the code here. Those code are provided on this official website. Here you can see there are four files. I was uh, made a copy. Put it here. You can see the core shell C the code dash shell test C shell exploit C code by stack dot C. So I make a I also made a copy here. Now let's uh, download all this code and uh, copy it to the folder we created today. I open a new tab. Go up here is a repository I cloned from our course compiler website. So I only need to open a terminal and use a git pull command. You see some files, uh, updated files are downloaded. Now go to the labs, lab 06, and uh, copy all these code. Control A, Control C, come to the folder we created today, as here. Now, we have all the source code we need. Then we continue this uh, preparation. First, uh, we need to turn off the counter measures provided by the operating system. We can execute the lab tasks using our pre-built Ubuntu virtual machine. Ubuntu, uh, uh, these are means the seed group. Okay. Ubuntu and other Linux distributions have implemented implemented several security mechanisms to make the power overflow attack difficult. To simplify our attacks, we need to disable them first. And later on, we will enable them one by one and see whether our attack can still be successful. The first uh, common method provided by the operating system use address space randomization to randomize the starting address or heap and stack. And this makes guessing the exact addresses difficult. And a guessing address, address is one of the critical steps for buffer overflow attacks. In this lab, we disable this feature using the following command. So then we can use brute force to find the address, right? But in the real world, maybe you have only one chance. So we still need to find a valid test. As we discussed, you can use some uh, native debugger to find the address, starting address or heap and stack, so you don't need to guess. And that one is uh, out of the scope of this course. If you have interest, you can try those uh, native debugger to debug any program without debugging information. And now I'd like to open a terminal window and uh, go to the folder I created today. Yeah, this is a folder type control error. And copy this uh, address. Okay, here I have all the source code, right? Now, first one, turn off the address randomization provided by the operating system. Sys control. You can use manual <coughs> sys control to find all the information. How to use this uh, sys control. Let's see whether we have a query option. Kernel dot randomize via space. You see, this current, this current value is two, which means both the heap starting address and the stack starting address are randomized. Every time 
you reboot, it will revert back to this uh, tool if you change it. So in the lab, we just change the temporary. So we use a dash W means write, write this value to a zero, turn off both the stack address randomization and the heap address randomization. And now you see uh, it's uh, changes to zero. This uh, counter measure is provided by the operating system. The second counter measure is uh, provided by the hardware, the CPU, and uh, the and the compiler. Here, the GC compiler implements a security mechanism called stack call, and we will discuss next week to prevent the buffer overflow. In the presence of this protection, buffer overflow attacks will not work. So. We need to disable this protection during the compilation using this uh, option, dash F no stack protector. For example, to compare a program example C with the stack called disabled, you can compare it like this, put this uh, option here. The third kind of measure, non-executable stack is provided by the CPU. And we want to use it to allow executable stacks but this has now changed the binary image or programs uh, and the shared libraries must declare with, whether they require executable stacks or not. And they need to mark a field in the program header. The ELF executable file format. So if you want to learn more, you can check that to find what program header. And the kernel and the dynamic linker uses this uh, mocking to decide where to make the stack of this uh, run program executable or non-executable. And this mocking is done automatically by the recent version of GCC. So it's supplied by the CPU, but uh, it need to, uh, it's manipulated by this GCC. And by default, the stacks are set to non-executable. So which means it's protected. To change that, we need this, uh, option to change that mock dash z exit stack, which means make the stack executable. We know stack is used to hold the data. Now, if it's executable, the malicious code can be executed. Otherwise, those code just are considered as data. For no executable stack, we use this no dash z, no exit stack. So these are the three counter measures. The first one is turn off with the sys, sys control. The second two are turn off with the options in the CC compiler. So these two, we need to uh, put them in the compiler. Now, let's, uh, we still need to configure this bin bash as we demonstrated um, this Monday because it has a counter measure. We need to turn it off. If by default, this bin shell symbolic link points to the bin dash shell. However, this bash program in these two virtual machines have an important uh, difference. The dash shell in this Ubuntu 16.04 has a measure that prevents itself from being executed in a set UID process as we demonstrated this Monday. And basically, if dash detects that it's executed in a set UID process, it immediately change the effective user ID to the process real user ID, essentially dropping the privilege. And the dash program in this old version does not have this uh, behavior, which means it does not have this kind of measure. Since our victim program is a set UID program and our attack relies on running this bin shell, and the kind of measures in this bin dash makes our attack more difficult. Therefore, we will link this one to another shell that that does not have such a counter measure that this shell right? as we have demonstrated. Okay, first we, we need to have a check. Then if it's not point to this vulnerable shell, we change it. So we can use ls-l bsh 
you see it's pointed to the safe version. Now let's uh, change it to the vulnerable version. Sudo bin dash sf. In this year, in share. And you can verify it again. You see it's uh, pointed to this Z share. It's linked to this Z share. Okay, now we are prepared. We are ready to do the task one and task two. For task one, running the share code. Before starting the attack, let's uh, get familiar with the shell code. Here is the shell code. It's uh, written in C program. And it uh, just executes this bin shell using this uh, execve. We have learned before how to use this execve to run a program, right? We know this is a safe way to run a program. Another in safe way is use system system call, that a system function. Use this execve function. However, the program being executed, this one, it's not safe since since we pointed to a Z here. And when we execute the program, we should get a shell. That shell is this bin shell. The shell code that we uh, use is just uh, the assembly version of the bio program. However, this program, it uh, has some uh, information used by the Ubuntu order to load this program. And in our assembly program, we, we don't uh, have the loader. And the following program shows how to launch a shell by executing a shell code stored in a buffer. And please compare and run the following code and see whether the share is invoked and download the program from their website. And you are interested in writing your own share code, you, you can do the share code lab. Okay, this is the, the second one, core share code.c. And this share code is put as data in the buffer. And we can just uh, Doing like this, we convert that buffer into a function. Then it can be executed. We use this function syntax. It's quite interesting, right? You can run a program like this, just copy all its uh, data, then run the like a, a function. So this is a second way. And actually our attack, is exploiting this way. We put this shell code in the buffer or in the battle file. Compile code about using the for instance, CC command and run the program and describe your observation. Please don't forget to use this exit step option, which allows the code to be executed from the stack. Without this option, the program will fail. Here, yeah. the shell code invokes this existing VE system call to execute the bin shell. And a few places in this shell code are worth main, mentioning. First, the third instruction pushes this sh rather than this one into the stack. We have double forward slash. This is because we need a 32 bit integer here. Here, you, you have only three characters. Each character is 8 bit, so we have only 24 bits. Fortunately, this double forward slash is equivalent to this single forward slash. So we can get away with a double slash symbol. And second, before calling this execve system call, we need to store name zero, the address of the string, and the name, the address of the array, and a null to this EPA, X, ECX, and EDX, the three registers respectively. Line five stores this name zero to EPX. Line eight stores name to ECX and so on. And there are other ways to set EDX to zero. We use uh, XOR. This XOR is a 
actually need to pay attention here. You can use just the move L edx, move zero to edx, but then in your code, you will have a zero. And that string copy will stop at that zero. So that's why we need this one as we emphasized during the lecture. And the one CDQ instruction used here is simply a shorter instruction. And it copies the sign bit 31 all the value in the EAX register, which is zero at this point into every bit position in the EDX register. So basically uh, setting this EDX to zero. But we avoid put zero explicit in the code. which means our compiled code will contain no zero. And a third, the system call x v is called when we set this AL to 11 and execute int 0x80. Uh, if you want to know more, you can learn about this, how to invoke a system call. It will use a software interrupt. This int means interrupt. Okay, now, uh, Let's uh, do this one, task one, task one. First, we have two program, need to run them. And the completion for the second one, we need to uh, turn this exit uh, stack on. For that first program, because there's no buffer needed, so you can just uh, Compare drawing time as usual. So you, you can use CCC, that is CCL. So let's first have a look on this code. We can use sub L, start or C to open all these uh, files. And I would like to put those uh, output to no device and run it in background, which means I can continue this terminal window. Right, I can continue here. So first uh, we want to run this C sharp. This is as simple, just like this, task one, C sharp code in C. So we only need a GCC to compare that C sharp, dash port to C sharp. You can see a C sharp program generated. When we execute, we will get a a Z share because that is SH point to Z share, right? So you see, uh, we we get a share here. This share is uh, this one bin share, and that bin SH it is linked to bin Z SH. Here we type ID, which is uh, still our uh, normal user. It's, we will see this dollar sign. We just have normal privilege. Not root bridge. We can exit. If you set it into a CUID program, you will get a root share. So we can use sudo ch owner, change the owner to root. We change its mode to CUID program. Verify it. You see it's a satellite point owned by root. So when we run it, we will get the root privilege. Right? You see the pound, pound key. Type, type ID. You see your effect UID equals zero. So we get the root share. This is the implementation in C code. Exit. And this uh, one, when we want to run it, uh, you, it uh, relies on the operating system loader to load this program and execute it. So some extra code or edit before the program and after this program, as we have seen in the lecture. Now we are interested in construct the buffer uh, control buffer and uh, control share, share code in the, in the buffer and run it. 
here uh, have uh, two part. We are currently we just need this uh, first part. Here you see the the second part we will use the in our next lab. So we need to comment out the second part. A quick way to comment out like this. Oops, it, it cannot be a, this kind of comments cannot be embedded. So we still have another way we can use a if zero and if. So this is another way to comment out this part. Okay, now let's compare and run this one. Since it's uh, the shell code is in the stack, we must uh, turn the stack as executable. Otherwise, it uh, will not uh, execute. We can have a look. So we use GCC to compare this uh, core shell code C dash O core shell one. Then we run it. You see, we get a segmentation fault because it's uh, uh, not executable the stack here. We want to execute this part, but it's not executable. So we need to uh, turn on dash Z exec stack make the stack executable. And this time we create a shell code too. Run the shell code too. You'll see we get a, a shell. And that shell is actually generated by this, uh, oh, this code. And this code are put in a buffer in the data portion. Another is on the stack here. And now we ex exit this uh, shell we got. If it's a set UID program, then we can get the root shell as uh, this one. The vulnerable uh, program, now let's have a look on the vulnerable program. We just complete the, uh, complete how uh, a shell program looks like and how to execute it. We have two ways, right? And the way put in stack is the way we want to use. Here the stack.c is a vulnerable program and that uh, Vulnerability with a buffer of low vulnerability. Vulnerability is here. String copy this, copy this uh, string to this buffer. This buffer it has a buffer size on 24. On 24. Now, in our lab, I will change this size to another number. And this one has a buffer of no problem. For example, if we change it to uh, 200, and if your string contains more than 200 data, then you will have a power flow, have a risk of buffer overflow. For example, we have a bad file, we have a string file 117, this string is much larger that buffer, right? Here we, again, we change the size to a, to a size specific to the lab. 
I open that bad file and copy the bad file contents into this uh, stream. Then we use that one function to copy the stream to the buffer. If there are no overflow, we get the return probably. Otherwise, we will get some problem. So here is the stuff. Let's uh, check the source code. The stack dot c. Here, the stack dot c buffer size. Now you are required to change this buffer size to 240. So any students, if your buffer size is not 240, your lab report is invalid. So please pay attention to this part. 240. Here is the vulnerable function. Okay, now let's compare and run this program. We need to uh, construct the bad file. The buffer size is only a 240 bytes. So if your bad file contains more than 240 bytes without a zero inside, we will get a buffer overflow. Now our objective is how to create the content of the bad file. First, uh, we just uh, create an empty bad file. We use touch bad file. So this bad file is empty. We can have a, have a verification. You see our bad file is zero byte. Nothing inside. Now, how do we compare and run it? We need to uh, turn off those uh, protections. Here we have GCC dash F no stack pro tackle dash Z exec stack. And followed by this uh, stack dot c output stack. So this is how do we uh, compare this uh, program. If we just run it, we return properly because our bad file is just zero byte, right? Now. Here it uh, changed to a serialized program. Okay, now we will change it to a serialized program. So do ch owner change the root, change the owner to root, then change the mode to serialized program. Have a look. Oops. No, it's owned by root and it's a side of your program. It's an SP. You run it, it's the same result returned properly. Okay, now we want to uh, task two to exploit in the vulnerability. Here we have uh, Two programs used to generate the bad file. One is written in C, the other one is written in Python. First one is written in C. In a risk code, the shell code is given. So we only need to figure out the start address and the return address. The store has a buffer, the return address of, of that uh, fun, vulnerable function. And to overwrite, overwrite the return address, and also need to put 
the malicious code inside this box we could have this malicious code with the shell code. Uh, in this uh, program here, you see uh, we initialize this buffer with 0x90, the knob instruction. And uh, we need to fill the buffer with the appropriate content here. Put your code here and save the contents to the file. Bad file, bad file. You have opened this bad file, you, you write it. So after you finish the bow program, compile and run it, this will generate the contents of the file. And then run the vulnerable program stack. If your exploit is implemented, you should be able to get a root shell. So we only need to figure out uh, those uh, addresses with time uh, this Monday. And we need to pay attention to this uh, note, what, what it says. Compare your vulnerable program first, and note that the program exploit of C generated bad file can be compared with the default style code protection enabled. This one does not matter because we only use generated bad file. And this is because we are not going to overflow the buffer in this program. And we will be overflowing the buffer in step C, which is compared with the style code protection disabled as we just have done. Here, it should be noted that although uh, you have obtained this uh, pound key prompt, your real user ID is still your self without ID. This is real user ID, your ID. This is effective your ID. This is a root. We can start with this ID. Right? And many commands will behave differently if they are executed as set your ID root process sets instead of just a root process. Because they recognize that the real user ID is not root. And to solve this problem, you can run the following program, turn the real user ID to root. And this way, we have a, a real root process, which is more powerful. And we are then the next week. Which means we need to put this one into our assembly code. How do you put this one into our assembly code? And we, we will learn uh, next week. So this week, in this lab, we only need to uh, launch the attack. The second version is the Python version, so it's uh, the same. Again, we only need to fill the content here. Uh, as a diamond in the class, we only need to find the, this stuff here. The return address, the offset, right? So offset, offset plus four. We only need to modify the code between these two lines. Okay, this uh, task two. Now let's uh, start task two with this Python first. Because we just demoed this Python in the lecture this Monday. So now, first, uh, in order to find them, you can use some native debugger to debug this uh, stack directly to find the uh, with uh, the needed information. But uh, we will, since we use GCC, we will, uh, we will need the debugging information. So we use GCC. We can bring back that uh, command here. So we create the dbg debug, right? To Add the debugging information, what uh, switch option do we need? We need a dash G, right?
Okay, now we can generate a program with the debugging information. So we can use GCC to debug this program. GDB, we use GDB to debug this program. And we know the one of the function name is called here what the one of the function name. The function one of the function is called BOF. So we need to uh, set a breakpoint at the BOF. B breakpoint B of then we run it. Okay, it just stop at that uh, BOF function. So we need to find this. Uh, we need to find. We actually you see that just just the string. We need to find the beginning address of this buffer, right? And also that the EPP register here. That EPP register. You can find the this register here. EPP. Okay, we use the command p print out as a hex number. This is a buffer, the start address of the buffer. Then we print out that EPP point to the following frame. So we have these two. Uh, well, we also want to uh, find the offset of this EDP relative to the start of the buffer to find that return address. We get a 248. Why we get a different value? Because our buffer size is different from what we diamond in the class. So now we have this information. We can have this information. Here this is uh, the init ad start address of the buffer. So we need to open that uh, Python code. exploit.py. What do we need to modify is this part? Right? So we again we can put the buffer start, let's just call it a buffer. Place here and that EBP. EBP is this one. We copy and come back and uh, paste here. Then the offset, the offset equals this EBP minus buffer plus four. And the return address. How do we find the return address? EBP minus buffer Plus four. So what? Why the color buffer is given? Whether it's used uh, somewhere? No, it's not used somewhere. Maybe it's a. Uh, okay, let. Let's see. We put some. Okay, if we just show some color, maybe it's a reserved keyword or something. Oh, it is the offset. Now we need to uh, change this uh, return address. The return address, as we demonstrated in the class, so we still need a guess. There's a buff plus this offset 
right? I need to plus this offset. So since this offset is, we need to uh, put it in front of that return address. As more here, oops. Function X. Okay, this uh, return address the equals is a buffer plus the offset. Then we still need to, uh, maybe uh, we still need to add a uh, more and more upward. And that number needs to divide by uh, four, for example, 40. And save it. So now we have this uh, point of pi. You can see this offset is 248. You can also make a note here, 248. But it depends on your system and your settings. We can that a buffer size in our stack.c. Okay, so now we can exit this uh, decoder. I would like to keep it here and uh, Open a new one, split horizontally. Python 3, followed by that exploit.py. Before that, let's de delete that previous bad file because this uh, Python 3 exploit.py will generate one for us. Where else? You see a Bad file over there. Now we can run the stack debug to see whether the attack worked. Then we will apply to that as this uh, set your ID stack program. We get a segmentation fault. So let's need to have a check on our bad file. We can use some uh, module value here. When you check this one, buff plus offset, this offset equals different buff will cancel out. So this one actually equals EBP plus uh, 40, 44, right? You still have this four, you will get 44. Let's uh, change it to 100 to have a look. This is our debug program. We move that bad file. Generate it again. Maybe we need to have a check about that bad file. Let's blast bad file. Okay, this is a bad file. Looks good, right? We have the shell code at the end. But we need to find the return address. So the return address is here. We put it here as that all offset. I think uh, maybe we made one problem. That offset, uh, yeah, offset we plus the for that. That's right. Now let's. Uh, run that uh, stack debug again, we get a shell now, which means now uh, it worked. We can 
to apply this attack to that uh, stack. We get our pound key. So our attack is successful. You can use ID to check your EID root, which means we get the root share. Hello, everyone. Uh, let's continue our lab. We just completed uh, one sub -ask how to construct the bat file with uh, Python. Now we will learn how to construct that bat file with C. Let's exit the PowerShell we got through the buffer overflow attack. So we only need to uh, map the file content of this Python code to the C code. So in this C code, how do we uh, generate that offset and uh, return address, right? Here we need to fill a code here. We can compile the C code with the content of this uh, Python code. In this uh, Python code, we have uh, this, this stuff is put the shell code at the end in this C code. Let's see. In this C code, we didn't see uh, put that uh, shell code at the end, right? So we can, uh, how about this one, nop command. Express yes, we did here. So this is nop command. We only need to uh, copy this part. Put it here, exploit.c as a reference. Put it inside uh, if you and and if. So we put it here. This is a Python code, so we can mimic the Python code. First, we need to uh, call the shell code at the end. How do we do that? Maybe we have a mem copy, right? Do we have this function? To learn how to use uh, this man copy, can can you see? Come to a, a terminal window. Type a man, man, copy. So you will see there is a man copy function, and how to use it. The head file is a string dot I think we already have that head file. Here you see that string dot We already have that head file. And the mem copy is copied from the source to the destination with the size of n, how many bytes. Let's see that the size n. Copy n bytes from memory area source to memory area test destination. So we can use this mem copy. But need to pay attention. This is the destination. The second one is the source. And also we need to know the length of that shell code, right? So what's the length of that shell code? We still need to find it out. Do our function called string length in C. Can use the integer. Maybe we need to de we need to define this integer in front of the program. Int length. Make it more readable. We call it a shell length. And also we want to define a variable uh, offset buff start EBP. So we have uh, all these uh, variables. Now the shell length equals string length. Do we have a string length? Again, we need to uh, have a check, right? 
we know how to use this main copy now. We can prove it and my string length. We have a string length and it's also included in this string.h. And how to use it, it will return the length of s excluding the terminating null byte. So this is how do we use this uh, string length. And actually we don't have a, let me check this one. It's an array, it's not a string. So it's a array, how do, how do we find the length of array? We can suppose it's a, because it's a char and it's an array, so it can consider as a string array. So string array, string length, this is a shell code. Then we copy the shell code to the destination. We know the destination, which is argument. The first one is a, The first one is, a, is the destination, right? Now I'm copying here. The first parameter is the destination. The second one is the source. So the destination is, mem copy, the destination is the buffer. The end of the buffer. So we need to, uh, the buffer length is of 517. So we need to uh, plus 517 minus this uh, shell length. 517 minus this uh, shell length. Just like uh, this Python code. Right, we have a start equal 517 minus the shell code length then from that start to the end. We copy this uh, shell code to that destination. How many bytes? The, the number of bytes is the length of this uh, shell code. So the shell uh, length, we copy so many bytes of the shell code to this buffer. This is the first part here. You can add a comment here, put the shell code at the end. Then we need to uh, adjust, we need to find the buffer start. Right, the buffer start, I use this, uh, the start equals this one we got from our debugger. And the EBP equals this one. And the offset. Then the return address. Yeah, we can still tell me, uh, define a re return address. Paste it here. Now, what else? We need to uh, set that uh, return address in the per to this one. Now this, this here we have something uh, interesting. Here it says the little Indian, but how about uh, 
do we need to uh, change the order or something? Actually, by default, Linux is, uh, this inter CPU is a little under. So we, we still need a mem copy. Copy to the buffer at this offset here. At that offset, as uh, offset. We only copy copy uh, the return address, right? Copy the return address. And uh, copy four bytes. So this is uh, how do we set up that uh, return address in C language. To make a comparison, we can save our old bad file back up our old battle file. Then we run this uh, import.c to generate a new battle file and compare those two battle files. So we can copy that battle file. Actually, we just uh, move it battle file to battle file dot pi, uh, not dot pi. Uh, let's say it's, it's generated by Python. So uh, battle file pi, which means it's generated by uh, our Python. Code. Now we want to generate a new one with our export C. Ctrl S save our C code. And GCCC, GCC exploit C dash O exploit. So with some, I have some uh, warnings. This is a mem copy. It uh, says. Yeah, this uh, return is an integer. We need to change it into a, okay, we have several problems. This is offset undeclared. But I just use off hit here. So offset, and also I have one here, I need to, uh, Find the address instead of this integer. Now we compare it again. This time, uh, all the errors and warning are gone. So we can run this exploit dot exploit to generate a bad file. Then we can compare these two bad files. We can use a uh, within diff. Compare this bad file and that bad file pi. And you can see uh, they are the same. We didn't see uh, some uh, difference because the, for the difference, you can press return to find the difference. When I press return, I didn't see any difference. So which means it's just, we generate this bad file that exists for the Hope my program uh, runs slow. I need to wait a little bit. It looks like this one is dead. Yeah, just close it and exit. Oh, yeah, quit. Quit uh, my debugger. So I can use another one, diff command, to compare this bad file and bad file pi. You see, there's no difference. So, which means the bad file generated uh, by my exploit. It also worked. You can run this check to see if we will get a root shell. Right, because it's a root shell. You type ID, you see your year ID is zero. Okay, that's it. 
this is how do we uh, mimic the exploit of Pi to create our exploit of C in C language. Actually, you can use any language to generate this uh, battle file as long as you know the structure of this battle file. Any questions? <laughs> 